purpose of our faith. The purpose of our faith. Now, by way of introduction, let me say this. That there are a lot of churches and a lot of faiths out there. There's a lot of people who believe a lot of different things. Okay? Though there are many different things people believe, generally speaking, the object of their faith, the purpose of their faith, is to worship the one they believe in. It's to worship the one they believe in. Now, even atheism is faith. An atheist has faith. Now, you say, now, wait a second. An atheist is the absence of faith. No, that's not true. An atheist believes that there is no God. That's a faith. An atheist, belie an atheist believes, they have faith that there is no God. That is their faith. That is their, if you want to put it this way, their religion. Their religion is, their faith is, I believe that there is none. Now, a Christian has faith that there is one, that there is a God, and that we can know Him and that we can worship Him, that we can speak to Him through our prayers and read about Him and through the Scripture. An atheist, though, still has faith. Everyone has to have some sort of faith. Everyone has to have some sort of faith. If a person believes there is no God, they still have faith. Isn't that interesting? So what is the purpose, the purpose of our faith? Well, I, there's a definition I found online, and here's a real simple way to define faith. The definition of faith is this. A strongly held belief or theory. It's a strongly held belief or theory. See, that's why an atheist has a belief and they have a theory. They have a theory that there is no God. That's a faith. Okay? But this is why we all have to have some faith in something. I don't think that there's anybody in this world that doesn't have faith. They just, it's what is it that they're believing in? What is it that they're placing their faith in? What is it, what is it that the atheists deny? They don't deny a faith. They deny a God. One person said this, um, let me get to the uh, faith, is a complete trust or confidence in something. Faith involves intellectual assent to a set of facts and trust in those facts. That's what an atheist believes. They believe they're trusting or putting their confidence in something. They have, they have uh, faith involves the intellectual assent to a set of facts. They believe a set of facts. Their facts that they believe, in facts, I, I use these air quotes, right? Uh, they believe that there is no God, and they trust those facts. Now, with this lesson this morning, we're going to be talking about the purpose of faith within the community of the church, within, within this community, within what we believe as Christian faith. What is the purpose of faith? What is the purpose of the Christian faith? And when I say Christian, I mean one who believes that Jesus Christ died for them on the cross, was buried and rose again the third day. That person, that Christian, what do they believe? Well, first of all, faith is our hope. Faith is our hope. Second of all, faith is our help. And third of all, faith gets us to heaven. But let's start with faith is our hope. Faith is our hope. You can't hardly mention uh, the topic of faith and hope in the same sentence and, and not mention one particular verse in Scripture comes out of Hebrews 11, uh, Hebrews 11, verses 1 to 3. You have to mention this when we talk about faith and hope. Listen to what this verse says. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. We're talking about faith is our hope. Now listen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. Now, as we break down this verse, let's go back to verse 1. The word substance, the word substance is the word confidence or assurance. Confidence or assurance. So now faith is the confidence or the assurance of things hoped for. Now the word hoped is the word expect. So it's not, it's not in the sense that we hope to have something, it's that we expect to have something. It's not, well, I think this might exist, it's I know this does exist, I expect it. So faith is the confidence or assurance of the things expected. 
I am assured, I am confident in what it is that I expect. That is my faith. And the word evidence is the word proof. So, the evidence of things not seen. It's the proof of things not seen. So the proof is, is that the things that appear were not made by the things that appear. That's what it says here, right? Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so the things which are seen are not made by the things which are seen. Someone else, and we call him God, created the heaven and the earth, and we believe this, we have confidence or assurance in that what we expect is true and we have proof because of what we see is not made by the things which we see. For instance, if you go outside and you look at the trees and you look at the, the universe, we, we go out there and we, we look out there and we say, we have confidence. I have confidence. I have assurance in that all of that out there was not made by the things that are out there. It seems so simple. It seems so simple. Now, I want to say this. Faith gives us confidence in that what we believe is, in fact, true. That's what faith does. And all we have is faith, by the way. All we have is faith. As a matter of fact, without faith, it says in Hebrews 11:6, 6, a few verses later, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, him referring to God. You can't please God without faith. The absence of faith brings no pleasure to God. We have nothing to offer God if we don't have faith. Now, some might say, well, we have something to offer God. We have, we, have, uh, we have praise to offer to God. Well, how can you offer praise to God if you have no faith in God? You have to have faith in God before you can offer him praise. We have nothing to offer God. And, I, and, and ironically, do you know that we have nothing to offer anybody else either besides our faith? I can, I, I, you say, well, you can leave your kids in inheritance. And they'll squander that. You can, you can leave your kids good work ethic and one day they won't work. All I have to leave the next generation of people is what I truly believe to be true, my faith. It's all that we have to offer God and it's all that we have to offer others. As a matter of fact, faith is the only thing, even in the secular world, we think, well, you don't have to have faith in the secular world. Well, listen, let me just ask you this. Do you believe that you'll have a job on Monday? So you have faith in that. You have faith in that there will be a paycheck at the end of the week. Do you, do, you have, do you have faith? Do you believe? Do you believe that you will be healthy enough to work at your job that you expect to have on Monday and that they will pay you a paycheck at the end of the week? You see, faith ex exists on, on, a, on a number of levels, but let me tell you, it takes faith just to live. We believe. You all believe Something, when you came here this morning, you believe that I will finish by noon. And you have faith that there's enough food in that kitchen to feed all of us. And if you brought food, you believe that the food that you brought does not have salmonella. And I have faith in that as well. Just nod with me. Yes, it's all healthy, right? Okay, good. We live by faith. That's all we have. That's all we have in the secular world anywhere. Faith is in every step that we take. As a matter of fact, Martin Luther King Jr. put it best, and he says, faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. You just believe it. Now, this is interesting. You believe it because it's always been there. You have faith in the rest of the staircase because you've been either on that staircase before or you've been on other staircases that didn't just come to an end. I had a friend of mine, his name was Bobby Simon. And uh, my boss and I were building a house for him. And it was, um, it was actually had a basement. It had a main floor and then two floors above it. It was like a small apartment building. And Bobby Simon, we had asked to run into the, um, into the garage and to grab uh, something. I don't remember what he was getting. And uh, again, we were in the middle of the construction project. And uh, we were heating the basement area because we had radiant uh, heat in the, in, in the uh, concrete. So we had to heat the basement just to make sure the pipes didn't freeze. And so we took, uh, we took one inch styrofoam and we put it over the entrance going into the basement so the heat wouldn't come up out of the basement. 
Well, Bobby thought for sure that that was solid. Well, Bobby was airlifted because he had faith that what was where he put his foot was going to be sturdy. And he fell down 10 feet and smashed his face on the concrete below. Bobby was airlifted because he thought that what he saw was true. We all have faith. What are you placing your faith in? Faith is the only hope that we have. And a lack of faith will only lead to despair. A lack of faith only leads to despair. If you don't have faith, you, 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 end, up, you end up despairing. Now listen, when you get to John chapter 20, verse 27, you see one of the disciples, his name was Thomas. And Thomas didn't have faith that the Messiah had risen. And he was faithless, he was not believing. And he said to the multitude that had seen the Lord, said, unless I see the, 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 the nail prints in his hands and put my finger into the nail prints and see the, the wound in his side and put my hand into his side, he says, I won't believe he didn't have any hope that the Messiah had actually risen from the grave. And when you get to John 20, about verse 27, the Lord came on the scene and he says, Thomas, reach hither thy, thy hand. And he puts his hand forward and he puts his, this is my side, these are the wounds. Do you believe me now? Be not faithless, but believing. And he goes on to say that, and Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. There was a point where Thomas was despairing, thinking that, thinking that the Lord, the Messiah, did not raise from the grave, but in fact he did raise from the grave, and he was faithless. Faithlessness leads to despair, but hopefulness leads to life. Hopefulness leads to life. In the 1950s, Kurt Richter, a Harvard graduate and John Hopkins scientist, did a series of experiments that tested how long rats could swim in high-sided buckets of circulating water before drowning. Dr. Richter found that under normal conditions, a rat could swim for an average of 15 minutes before giving up and sinking. However, if he had rescued the rats just before drowning, dried them off and let them rest briefly, and then put them back in the same buckets of circulating water, the rats could swim an average of 60 hours. A rat was, when a rat was temporarily saved, it could survive 240 times longer than if it had not temporarily been saved. Dr. Richter uh, concluded that the rats were able to swim longer because they were given hope. A better conclusion is that the rats were able to swim longer because they were given energy through hope. And the rats had a clear picture of what being saved looked like, so they kept swimming. 240 times. I've heard of heard of people who have had cancer, who have had cancer, and the doctor looks at them when they ask, they say, how long do you expect me to live, doc? And they said, well, you'll live as long as you want to live. You see, faith is our hope. When we have faith in God, we have hope. And that's a marvelous thing. Now we get to point two, faith is our help. Faith is is our help. Faith not only provides the means by which we are saved, but it also provides help for us while we live among the earth. It's our helper. Galatians 3.11 says, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident the just shall live by faith. Now let me say this, that we know that this means the just or the justified shall live or have eternal life through faith. I understand that. I understand it. That's what this verse means. But this is a quote from the Old Testament book Habakkuk. And when you get to the Old Testament book of Habakkuk 2 verse 4, you get, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Now, one commentator made an interesting comment on Habakkuk 2.4. This is what he said. A righteous Israelite who remained loyal to God's moral precepts and was humble before the Lord enjoyed God's abundant life. To live meant to experience God's blessing by enjoying a life of security, protection, and fullness. Do you realize that not only do the just have eternal life by their faith, but the just will also have an abundant life and a fulfilled life because of their faith? Faith is what gives us our help throughout life. 
And if we don't have the faith, we really don't have a whole lot of anything. Psalm 16.11 says, Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. There is a blessing for the person who lives their life by faith. Not only are we justified by our faith, but we have a, a life that is pleasing. We have an abundant protection and fullness in our life. And the life that we live today, we should live by faith. This is what Paul was talking about in Galatians 2.20. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. He says, I was crucified, yes, but I'm still alive. And he says, and, and, and the life that I live now, this life I live by faith in who? In Christ, the Son of God. This is how we ought to live our lives. Faith in God helped Paul and it helped us too. And so many of us, we, we live our lives in faithlessness where we're not living a life of faith, trusting God day by day. We trust Him to save us, but we don't trust Him in our daily lives. And if you want to have this life that, this, uh, that, that the Bible Knowledge Commentary referred to, God's blessing by enjoying a life of security, protection, fullness, you have to live your, day, you live your life day by day, trusting and, being, and, 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 and living your life in faith. Here are some things that, um, here are some things that, uh, that faith will do. In Matthew 8.10, faith healed the centurion's servant. In Matthew 15, faith healed the, the Canaanite daughter. So faith has, this, has, a, has a healing effect. Uh, Mark chapter 10, faith, uh, faith healed the blind. In, in uh, Matthew 9, faith healed the palsy. Get this, in Matthew 17, Jesus said that faith will move mountains. In Luke 17, faith, he said, will pluck up the sycamore tree and cast it in the sea. In Matthew 21, 21, faith uh, also withered the fig tree. You see, faith gives us help. Not only does it give us hope, it gives us help. It gives us everything we need in order to live our lives that it's pleasing to God. That's it. We have to have faith. Can a person be saved and live a faithless life? Yes, they can. And they won't have the help that they need. They'll have no hope and they won't have the help they need either. So if you want hope and you want help, you have to have faith because that is what it does. It helps us. Martin Luther said, Faith is a living, daring confidence in God's grace. So sure and certain that a man could stake his life on it a thousand times. Now, not only do we have the eternal life of God through faith but we, that we could stake our lives on it a thousand times, but we also have our temporal life. That we know that tomorrow we can believe and we can trust God. And we can stake our lives on it a thousand times. Do you have that kind of faith? Church, do you have that kind of faith? Where you can stake your life on it? Church, do you want that kind of faith? Not just the faith that will save you, but the faith that gives you hope and the faith that gives you help throughout life. Brothers and sisters, I want that faith. And I am in a constant search for that faith. Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Help me to have a stronger faith, a daily faith that's pleasing to God. And not only is faith our hope and faith our help, but faith gets us to heaven. Faith will get us to heaven. Now one primary thing that the Christian faith has that sets us apart from other religions in the world is we believe something that someone else did that saves us. Now that's amazing. That's amazing. You don't just find this in all the religions of the world. Usually it's a self-effort, it's a self-work, it's something that, something that the individual does in order to gain what it is God wants them to have. It's me, all about me, what I've done, how do I work out my work for my salvation? That's what it's about. But the Christian life is so different. I'm trusting someone, someone else to do something else for me that I can't do for myself. 
I can't trust myself to save me. I have to trust in another. And usually it's the one in peril who can't save themselves, who got themselves into the mess that they're in. They cannot, they cannot get themselves out. They have to trust someone else to, to help them. We talked about this a little bit in Sunday school. We talked about uh, uh, living in Minnesota for, for years and, and uh, people, being, people being stuck in the snow and, and they can't get themselves out, right? So, so I have to come in and I, and I, and I offer voluntarily and, and kind of in, 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 a, in a joking sense and say, hey, listen, I'd be happy to get you out of the mess you're in. And I get in and rock it a little bit and just kind of just ease my way out and drive it onto a, 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 you know, a, a dry piece of pavement or something. And see, the problem is, is they couldn't get themselves in, out of the mess they got themselves into. And that's the same way with salvation. Faith, faith is what gets us heaven. It is what gets us heaven. I love quoting Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith. Faith saves us. And that not of yourselves, you're not, you're, not, you're not able to get out of the mess you're in by yourselves. It is a gift of God. It is the gift of God. Salvation is a gift of God which you receive through faith. It's not of works lest any man should boast. We get to Romans chapter 3 and it says, Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. He's justified by his faith. Faith is what gets him to heaven. Faith is not only our hope, it's not only our help, but it gets us heaven. We go into Romans 4, 5 and it says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his what? Faith is counted for righteousness. It's not his self-effort. It's not his works. It's not his, it's not his keeping the law. It's not him doing all the deeds that, God, that, that, that you think God wants you to do in order to be saved. It's faith is what gets us to heaven apart from our own works. When we get to Romans 5, we see, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Being justified by faith. We are justified. God looks at us as if we are not sinners or as a sinner who has, who has made the, who has, God has made the payment for us because of our faith. Faith helps. Faith will give us the hope we need. But also faith gets us to heaven. Without it, we have no hope, no help, and no heaven. One guy, Thomas Aquinas, I'm sure you know who this is, he said, to one, to, to one who has faith, no explanation is necessary. Now, now, interestingly, God gives us an explanation, doesn't he? God is not just, this isn't, people say, well, Christianity is blind faith. This isn't blind faith. We got a, a whole book that tells us about him. We got all creation. We just go outside. That's not a blind faith. We look around and we say, this is a unique planet. There are no other planets like this. I've said this a million times. Listen, they can't even find water on another planet. And we have an abundance of water. You can't find anything like this anywhere in the world. We are unique. There are no little green aliens running around on other planets. Are there UFOs? Yes, they're unidentified flying objects. Do they house little green men? No. Friends, I'm telling you, we are unique. God has given us a tremendous amount of evidence. We have all the evidence we need. Now, Thomas Aquinas, to one who has faith, no, no explanation is ne necessary. To one without faith, no explanation is possible. A disbeliever, someone who places their faith in what they believe is true. By the way, they have faith. It's just misplaced faith. You can't explain it enough. The, the Word of God, we try so hard to tell people, this is what God says on the matter. And they say, I just, just won't believe it. You know, I think, of, I think of Doubting Thomas. What would it take for humanity to believe in Jesus? Would it take him showing up? Well, he, won, he will one day. And every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And they will say, you know what? He is real. He is absolutely real. I think of the testimony at the crucifixion where there was one there who said, surely this was the Son of God. What does it take for you to have faith in God? Do you need an explanation where we have it right here? 
to the whole word of God that shows us that God is true, God is real. Faith will give us hope, faith will give us help, and faith is what gets us to heaven. And friends, if you're here today and you do not know where you're going when you die, if you are uncertain of your eternal life, are you going to spend it with the Lord? Friends, the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Someday you're going to have to give an account. Are you able to stand before the Lord and say, Lord, I believe that you died on the cross for me? Are you able to do that? The other day I, I told Joel, I said, Joel, I said, I need you to go pick someone up. And, uh, you know, sometimes when we pick people up, they, 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 all they want is they, they want money. So I just told Joel, I said, Joel, just leave your wallet here. And I said, but I said, why don't you go on out, though, and, and make sure they get the gospel. And he walks out and comes back in. He says, how am I going to do that? <laughs> because we always use the wallet, of course. Anyway, I just love the wallet illustration. It makes it so clear. Let this hand represent you and me and let this wallet, this is Joel's wallet, by the way. No, it's not. <laughs> not. Joel, let me see your wallet. (laughs) Smart man. Just pass it forward. You trust me, right? Anyway, let this hand right here represent you and me and let this wallet represent all of our deeds, all of our good deeds and all of our bad deeds. The Bible says that all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. All of your goodness is as filthy rags to God. Isn't that interesting? Not just your bad deeds. He didn't say all of your bad deeds are filthy rags. He said all of your righteousness is as filthy rags. The Bible says God loves us but hates hates our sin. The Bible says that we here can't make the payment for our own sin. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. It's not church membership. It's not walking an aisle or getting baptized. The wages of sin is death. Someone had to die. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ came to the cross, came to this earth, died on a cross to pay for our sin death. It's not by, not by being good. It's not by doing good deeds or turning over a new leaf or anything like that. You still got the same leaf, just the other side. You get water baptized till your skin turns pruny. doesn't wash away sin, though. What saves us is this hand right here meaning representing Jesus Christ, he who knew no sin. Now, what does that mean? Jesus Christ who didn't have sin of himself. If he didn't have a debt to pay, he could pay our debt. Does that make sense? He who knew no sin was made sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Now God, Jesus, comes to this earth, dies on the cross, is buried, and rose again the third day, and now looks at you and me as righteous as Him. Now how does this transaction happen? How does faith get us heaven? It's when we believe in the quietness of our mind, when we trust Jesus Christ alone, when we believe that He died for us, was buried, and rose again. I love using this verse, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You're not going to be standing in heaven one day saying, Lord, I earned this. I did good deeds. He's going to say, you didn't earn anything. I earned it for you. I made the payment for you. And I gave it to you simply by faith, as a gift. You believe in it, you receive the gift of eternal life. There are churches out there today that say you've got to turn from sin. Well, how much sin do you got to turn from? What happens if you turn back to sin? People say, well, I, well you got to try. you got to try what? We've, tr- we've, we've, tri- we've been trying. The thing is, is that's, that's reason for boasting right there. When we believe that we can earn our way to heaven, that, that, that's, that, gives us, that gives us boasting rights. Look at me, God. Look how good I was. And I can stand out and boast to all you and say, I'm a pretty good person. Well, being good is good, but being good does get you to heaven. you got to be perfect. And the only way we're perfect is when we have Jesus Christ impute his perfectness to our account by faith. That's it. Not only is, is faith our hope, but faith is our help and faith gets us to heaven. The purpose of our faith is important. It does so much more than this. But it certainly does this. And if you're here today for the first time and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you don't know where you're going to die, it's not a raising of hands, it's not a coming forward, it's not giving money, it's when you in the quietness of your mind say, the Lord, the best I know how, I believe that Jesus died for me. 
believe he was buried and rose again the third.